the reason guys don't do it is twofold, right? One, they're scared. Two, they don't know how. And you look at almost every single sticking point in the game, it's that, right? Guys don't do approaches. Like, don't walk up and say hi to a girl. One, they're scared. Two, they don't know what to say, right? Guys, next, next most common sticking point, guys don't make it man to woman. Why? One, scared to do it. Two, they don't know how, right? Next one, guys don't, like, go for the kiss or don't, like, go for a number or whatever. One, they're scared to risk it. Two, they don't know how. It's like a continuing theme. Oh, guys don't pull girls home. They just get numbers instead of pulling. Why? One, scared to try. Two, don't know how. All right, so every one of these things is, is the same thing. And the nice thing is, in learning how, you get a little less scared to do it. Because if you have a roadmap in your head and you have a game plan, you have some idea of, of what's, how it's going to go down, then it's a little less scary. It's still scary, a little bit. It's still a little, like, it's, it's a risk, right? Every time you're trying to escalate, you are risking the interaction a little bit. So it is a little scary. But it's necessary scary, okay? Um, as far as that, it's kind of a bizarre metaphor, but it's one I really like. Is um, so think of the the interaction as like a fire. You have this this fire that you're like you're tending and you're keeping it alive, right? <coughs> if you do nothing, what's going to happen? It's going to die. Yeah, eventually the fire will burn out. So if you do nothing, eventually the fire will burn out. But it won't burn out this second, and it won't burn out ten seconds from now. It won't burn out ten minutes from now. It may burn out like an hour from now or tomorrow morning or something like that. Okay, so it'll burn for a while. And it won't seem like anything's going wrong for a while, but it is eventually going to burn out inevitably. It's a guarantee it will burn out. But on the other hand, if you put like, you know, wood on the fire, right? Um, you put wood on the fire. Now there is a risk. If you put like too much wood on the fire and smother it, or you put wood on the fire and it like doesn't take in some way, or it's like wet wood or something like that, you might kill the fire, right? Might actually happen. But it's a necessary risk because you know 100% if you don't, the fire will burn out. Right? And if you do it right, that's the one and only way to like, keep the fire alive. At least you have a chance. Of that exactly, you have a chance. But you are risking it burning out sooner. sooner. Right? And that's what you have to be doing in order to escalate. Because right? instead of saying, like, oh, it's going okay, let me not ruin it, you have to say, I'm going to do the right thing, even if it does ruin it in this moment, even if it is a little awkward in this moment. Right? And that's, that's the decision you have to make. Okay? Just be willing to do that. Be willing to risk the immediate pain in order to give yourself an actual chance. The most obvious way is the most to be very obvious. It's to just flat out give a compliment. Hey, you're very hot. Hey, I like you. Hey, I'd like to date you, right? Hey, uh, I've always had a crush on you. De bad declarations of love, right? Um, especially the, ba the bad declaration of love doesn't work very well. Some of those other ones are actually fine, right? Hey, you're cute. I wanted to meet you is actually fine as a start, right? Especially there's, there's ways to deliver it, right? There's, there's the low value way. Hey, excuse me. Um, you're like I just like you're very cute. Uh, actually, let's let's be honest. You're gorgeous, and um, like I just would you maybe consider talking to a guy like me, <laughs> right? That's the very low value way, and that's not so good, right? On the other hand, hey, you know what? You're cute. Want to meet you? What's what's your name? Right. That's a little bit better, right? Or hey, you're cute. I'm Todd. Right. That's the more high value delivery, and that that makes a big difference. But fundamentally, it is still giving a compliment. Mm -hmm. And on a, certain, on a certain very high level, it is giving your value away, away a little bit. So the question is, how can we establish being man to woman without giving our value away, giving our value away even less? Right? And there's a few different ways we can do it. Um, and you, you've probably heard of some of these. One is push-pull. Right? So if instead of saying, um, hey, I really like you, you're very pretty, you can say, like, um, you're very pretty, but you have this like, very dorky thing about you at the same time, it's cute. Right? So that's like, actually it's kind of a push pull, a pull push pull or something like that, whatever. But it has a negative spike to it. It has something that makes her go, wait, hang on. Maybe, maybe he likes, maybe he doesn't, or maybe he's just teasing with me, or maybe he doesn't mean it that seriously, et cetera. Right? So it makes it, you're still clearly indicating man to woman, but you're not giving your power away quite as much. The funny thing there is it's, it's almost as if the way you're delivering, it's kind of a push pull. Right? Be like, like I'll say that sometimes, I'll be like, um, um, or even I'll, I'll do like a soft one, like, hey, you're sort of cute, or, or something like that, so it's, it's light, or blah, 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 yeah, you're cute, but anyway, on to the next thing. That all helps. It is still giving your power away very slightly, though, right? If you have, if you have only, uh, that one alone would be fine, right? Oh, you're kind of cute. But then later on, oh, you have beautiful eyes. And later on, oh, that's a nice dress. You add those up, it starts to give your power away. Does that make sense? Be, especially if there's no negatives. If there's no negatives, it's just, it's just, it's just so easy and so obvious. Think of it this way, um, in terms of like being nice and, and giving compliments and things like that. 
if you had a professor, like in, in, in university or school or whatever, who gave everybody an A, always gives everybody an A, everybody passes his class, no matter what you do, you're getting an A. You go take his class and you get, guess what? You get an A. Do you feel good about yourself? No, you don't feel bad about yourself, you don't feel good about yourself, you just basically don't feel anything. Okay, cool, I got my A. Got the A I was supposed to get. Good job. Right. On the other hand, you have a, um, a professor who gives really awful grades. Like he's really tough, he knows his shit, and like if you get anything wrong, he's gonna count you off on it. He'll, um, he'll challenge you. Just like whatever, half his class fails every, every term. Right? You go to his class, you work your ass off, you get a B plus. How do you feel about that B plus? Yeah, very good. Yeah, there's probably there's probably one person in here that's like I've gotten straight A's my whole life. Fuck him for giving me a B plus, right? But for the most part, yeah, you feel really good about that, right? Because you actually earned it. It actually means something, right? But technically, he was less nice to you than the person who gave you an A because he gave you less, right? But the thing he gave actually had value. It's the same thing with someone who's just very nice all the time. Each little bit of niceness they give it's not perceived as real because it's perceived that's just what they do. That's just how they are. All right, so if you're nice to everybody all the time, each nice act is only worth like this much. It's just like, oh, that's just his personality. Or even worse, that's just his coping strategy. He just does that because it's the only way he knows how to be. Or he just does that because he wants something from you even. All right, so it's actually even, even necessarily, even possibly a bad thing or even like an annoying thing. He's just like, he's always so nice to me. He's like always kissing my ass. It annoys me. Girls will say that kind of stuff. I have some super nice guy who just treats them like, treats them amazing. He's like, He's just an ass kisser. Just, I don't trust him. Right? On the other hand, if you show that you're willing to say something negative every once in a while, you show you're willing to give shit or stand up for yourself every once in a while, now the times when you're nice instead of being worth this much are worth like this much. Right? And so if you're nice 80% of the time and an asshole 20% of the time, you're actually perceived as more nice, better. Your, your niceness is worth more than if you were nice all the time. Right? Same thing. So the kind of things you're saying are totally fine in a vacuum, like, oh, you're kind of cute. You know, as a throwaway gesture, like, it doesn't matter that much, it's totally great. Unless it's along with a pattern of all positive, 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 in which case it's, it's worth almost nothing, right? But you start throwing in just a few negatives, you're like, I'm not sure about you. you. Throw one of those in every once in a while. Or you throw in, somebody says, like, wait, 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 you said what? Wow, all right, well, right, you throw one of those in every once in a while, now all of a sudden, when you're actually nice, you're like, well, actually, I respect what you said. Right, now it means something. Okay, do you guys understand that? So having the negatives actually make the positives more positive. Does so work, you, sorry, does it work also not towards the girl? Like, oh, I really hate this kind of the people that do this, this and that. So I'm sure, I mean, the fact that you're willing to... Show that... A little bit, yeah. The fact that you're willing to have some negativity there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and the idea is not necessarily to have like a negative outlook or be like a miserable person, by the way. You don't want to do that. You just need to be, show that you're willing to stand up for yourself, show that you're willing to state your mind, and show that you're willing to offend if necessary. It's more about being, being willing to offend than being negative or miserable.